If you're watching this video, congratulations. You are about to level up your After Effects workflow. Let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to Learn How to Edit Stuff. My name is Ian and people ask me all the time, Ian, how do you get so fast at After Effects? How, how'd you get so fast? Well, the answer is really quite simple and it comes in two parts. Part number one is proper workflow and that just honestly comes with a lot of time in After Effects. But number two and the thing that we're gonna cover today, which is the biggest reason why I'm so fast at After Effects is utilizing shortcuts. And there is a tremendous amount of you out there that don't utilize shortcuts at all or are barely scratching the surface of the After Effects default shortcuts. Most of them are hot garbage. How do you all live like this? I can't, I can't stand by any longer and just watch you waste your life away not utilizing shortcuts. So today is going to be a masterclass on shortcuts. Some are gonna be keyboard shortcuts, some are gonna be clicking shortcuts, some are gonna be workflow shortcuts, but all of them I guarantee are gonna help and you are going to learn at least two new things that you didn't know before by the end of this video. So make sure you stick around till the end and also smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications and drop a comment in the comment section below. I would really appreciate it. I make these videos for you to learn free things. And all I ask is that you smash a couple buttons on YouTube. Now my theory on shortcuts, since I know you're very interested in Ian's shortcut theory, is that your hands should never leave the keyboard and the mouse. You always have one hand on each thing and all of my keyboard shortcuts, I try to keep to the left side of the keyboard as much as possible so that you never have to look down away from the screen, which is where your attention should be directed at all times. So all of my keyboard shortcuts have those things in mind. I'm gonna show you everything that there is to know about my shortcuts. And I'm also gonna drop everything in the video description below. It's gonna be a big list. Now I've tried my best to organize all of my shortcuts into categories and we're gonna cover all of those categories today. There might be some hidden in there. So definitely watch till the end. And if you learn something, at least two things, drop a comment in the comment section below. Even if you learn one thing, I would really appreciate it. Smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. We are jumping into it. Ian's After Effects Shortcut Masterclass. Let's get into it. All right, kiddos, we are in After Effects 2023 version 23.4. And the first thing I wanna cover is where you actually change your keyboard shortcuts. You come right up here to the edit menu and go to keyboard shortcuts. And here you will find everything you need to change your keyboard shortcuts to either reflect what I'm gonna be using or something that you wanna use yourself. But it's kind of cool. You just click into this menu here and you can hold down shift or control or control alt and it will show you all of the different keyboard shortcuts that rely on those modifiers when you hold them down. So you're gonna see a snapshot of kind of what you're looking at here. And if you want to change one of your keyboard shortcuts, you can delete the one that's already there or you can add an extra one onto it if you want, but I'm just gonna delete this for now. And then you click in this little blank area under where it says shortcut, a little dialog box will appear. And then you put in the shortcut that you want to assign to that parameter. Again, I will be dropping all of the parameters in the video description below so you know exactly what they're called, but you can search for those terms here as well. Nice. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is expanding layers. I know a lot of you will come over to a layer and to see its properties, you'll click on the arrow, then you'll click on the arrow, then you'll click on the arrow. That takes a lot of time to click all this time. It's compounding when you have a huge project. But what you can do is you can hold down control and then click on the arrow, and that will actually expand everything under those layer properties that's contained on the layer. So it's just a very easy to open and collapse all subfolders and all effect parameters on a given layer instead of individually clicking on the little arrows themselves. Control click, expand, control click, contract, easy. Now, if you open up a layer and you go to one of the parameters, let's go to scale, for example, if you don't do anything and you just click and drag, you can control the scale here, which is great. But what if you wanted refinement controls over the scale of this layer? If you hold down control while scrolling on a parameter, you can actually get decimal point control over that scale. And now I'm just scaling it by 0.1 at a time. If I let go of control, I'm scaling by one at a time. And if I hold down shift, I can scale by 10 at a time. So this is a really nice way to just kind of like scale things up really big if you need to, instead of running out of screen room and then having to like, you know, double scroll or whatever, you can just use shift for large values, control for small values, and then nothing for just regular single point values. So one new thing that got introduced in this version of After Effects is the properties panel. With a layer selected, you can click on the properties panel to expand and you have all these different properties right over here in the right sidebar, which is really, really handy and convenient, especially when it comes to shortcuts. So I don't really have to use the character panel or the paragraph panel anymore because all of those properties are contained right within the properties panel itself. So definitely a nice little handy panel to have. And somebody on my last YouTube video asked how you uh, expand just individual panels one by one and have it collapse when you click on it again. All you have to do is right click, 
go to panel group settings and make sure solo panels in stack is selected. If you don't have that selected, whenever you open a panel, they will just all open and then you kind of end up with this huge laundry list of panels that you have open and it becomes kind of like unmanageable when you do it this way. But right click, go to panel group settings, solo panels in stack, and now you don't have to worry about it anymore. You can just expand or collapse each individual panel individually. And with that, now we get into general keyframe shortcuts. To add any keyframe to any layer for me, I use Alt S for scale, Alt R for rotation, Alt P for position, and Alt T for opacity. I believe the After Effects default is Shift, Control, and then all of those things. That's too many things. You have to take both hands off the mouse and keyboard in order to do that. You're looking down, doesn't make sense. Reset them all to Alt, P, S, R, and T. It will save you so much time, I promise. That's like one of the biggest things. Let's say you have just a scale and rotation keyframe on your layer and you have the layer collapsed. If you wanna see all properties on a layer that are animated, just click on the layer and hit U on the keyboard. I believe that is the After Effects default, but U will show you all parameters that have keyframe animation on them on the layer, and then you can hit U to go back to normal default state. When you have your keyframes, let's go over here and just add a couple keyframes on scale. If you highlight those keyframes and you hit F9 on the keyboard, it will easy ease all of your keyframes, which will automatically apply default easing if you go to the graph editor to those keyframes. You can also do the same thing by highlighting them, right clicking and going to keyframe interpolation or keyframe assistant, where you can also get to easy ease, but hitting F9 on the keyboard way faster. Okay, let's talk about moving the playhead on your timeline. Of course, you can click and drag and you can move it wherever you want, but did you know you can hold down control and use the left and right arrow keys to move over one frame at a time? And if you do shift control and the left and right arrow keys, you can move over 10 keyframes at a time. And this becomes really, really handy when you wanna make short, quick animations and you don't wanna have to count. You don't wanna have to go one, two, three, four, no, that's ridiculous. Just hit shift control, 10 keyframes, set a keyframe, right? Shift control, arrow key, alt S. All of these little combo of keyboard shortcuts, especially when you have both hands on the keyboard and mouse, just compound on each other and make you really, really fast and way more efficient inside of After Effects, which is how you get better and how you feel more confident and all these other things. Okay, great. I've mentioned this in some of my other YouTube videos before, but we are gonna talk about moving the anchor point. For example, when you create a text layer, for some reason, it put the anchor point on the lower middle uh, point of my text layer here, which is fine. If I wanted to rotate this layer, for example, it's going to rotate from the bottom and if I wanted to move this anchor point to wherever I want, I can hit Y on the keyboard and I can move it to a completely different location. So if I wanted to rotate from the top left corner, it will rotate from that top left corner. If I want to center that anchor point in my layer, I can hit Alt C to center the anchor point. And if I want to center this layer in my composition, I hit Alt X, X marks the spot right for the center. And if I want to reset this layer back to its original state when I created it, I can hit Alt Z, which will set it back to when it was initially created. So lots of ways to reset layers. I can center the anchor point, I can center the layer in my composition all by using Alt Z, X and C, which are all directly next to each other. And so doing these very very fast combination of things can happen very quickly. And the more you do it, the more it becomes muscle memory and just becomes more of the process. And last but not least, when it comes to keyframes, let's set a scale, rotation, and position keyframe, and let's move one second over and change some of these values. So how can I condense or expand these keyframes? Well, you just box select them, hold down Alt, and now you can uniformly condense or expand all of those keyframes, and it works with multiple values as well. So that is a very, very handy shortcut to go back to. Okay, now let's talk about the actual timeline itself. Starting in the bottom left-hand corner, there's all these little icons down here in After Effects. You may not know what they are or what they do, but if you click on them, it will expand more layer options and timeline options for you over here, like your render time thing. There's, there's all these different various settings. And if you have the screen real estate to have them all on, Awesome, amazing. I have an ultra wide monitor myself, but I usually only keep these first two on at any given point. If I need some of the other ones, I'll turn them on, but definitely have these two on because it will just save you a bunch of time trying to find stuff so that you're not constantly hitting the like toggle switch modes button or like going back and forth between these things. They're just always up and always available. Now, if you want to trim a layer on your timeline, let's say we want to trim this text layer to the three second mark, I can hit Alt and the left bracket on my keyboard and that will trim the layer to the playhead from the left and Alt right bracket will trim the layer from the right and you can kind of trim your layers accordingly so that you can make them the size that you need so that they're not the entire duration of your composition, which normally happens by default. So this is just a really nice way to just quickly trim your layers if you need to very, very quickly and you don't have to deal with like clicking and dragging the end, that kind of gets annoying. 
On top of that, let's say you wanted to set your timeline duration to the length of this layer. All you have to do is use B for beginning and it will trim the work area to the playhead and then N for N, it goes one frame over. So you just have to make sure that you're getting it exact. And then from here, my shortcut to trim to work area is Alt H. Uh, I remember that from like highlight. So B for beginning, N for N, H for highlight, and it will condense that entire timeline down to the work area. Let's do that one more time so you can see what I did. My timeline here is like 30 seconds long, but Alt H will just trim it. And now it's just a couple seconds long for the duration of my layer that I had. If I'm zoomed in really far on a text layer and I'm doing micro adjustments or whatever, and I wanna get back out to normal view, I just click down here on my timeline and do shift F and that will bring me back to fit mode. Down here, it's the same thing. If you're really zoomed in, you can drop down this menu and go to fit. But for me, I just have it as shift F because that's significantly faster. And again, I don't have to look down. I don't have to take my hands off the keyboard. It's just a quick one and done situation. Uh, moving on, adding things to the timeline that I want to affect the layers or anything that I really have going on. Alt N will add a new null object. Alt A will add a new adjustment layer. Alt W will add a new solid, very, very quick. And I can just add that to my timeline. And then when I want to see the parameters or the properties of a layer, I do shift Alt W, which will bring up my layer properties. So I can adjust the height and the width. I can adjust the color if I want to here. And that shift Alt W will also work on other layers as well, like this adjustment layer, for example. Okay, formatting on your timeline when it comes to design, Control R will turn your rulers on and off. And then you can pull down from those rulers to create your own grid lines in your composition to line things up really nicely. If you want to turn your grid lines on and off, you can do control and the semicolon key, which I believe is the After Effects default. And it does break my rule of two hands off the mouse. But usually when you're setting guides and stuff, you don't really actively have to be paying attention. So control and semicolon will turn those on and off. Again, control R will turn the rulers on and off. And my shortcut to bring up the proportional grid is alt and the tilde key which will automatically bring up a proportional grid. And I use this one all the time. And if I want to edit that proportional grid, control alt and the tilde key, which will open my menu that I can adjust my proportional grid as needed. Okay, let's add some shapes to our timeline now. To add a new shape layer for me, I use Shift, Alt, and S will allow me to put a new shape on the timeline. And while I'm still dragging out this shape, I can hold down Shift and it will uniformly scale along the X and the Y so I can get uniform scale. If Shift is not being held, it will let me do really wonky things and you know put my shape kind of wherever I want. And the shape that you're gonna be creating is based on this shape up here for your mask and shape setting. So if I were to go back into the ellipse tool, for example, and I have that automatically set, now when I add a shape layer, Layer, it's going to add an ellipse in the form of an oval, or if I hold down shift, it will add a uniformly scaled square. And check this out, when I let go of my mouse click, boop, it automatically puts the anchor point in the center of my shape layer because I went to edit and preferences and general, and I have checked on this little checkbox right here. Center anchor point in new shape layers, which will automatically do it. And you don't have to do the center anchor point trick that we talked about earlier. So that's a nice little time saving tip as well. If you wanna add stroke or fill settings to your shape layer, did you know you can come right up here and alt click on the box that says stroke to automatically add a stroke or alt click again to add a gradient stroke or alt click again to add a radial gradient stroke. And you can do the same with fill as well. So if you wanted to fill your shape layers with a certain kind of stroke or fill or whatever, you can just quickly alt click on these parameters up here to turn them off entirely or change them to your heart's content. And that just makes it way easier than going to add and then to fill or come coming down here and going to open this and then contents and then add and then fit. none of that. Don't do that anymore. Just alt click right up here when you need it. It will automatically add it and then you can adjust it accordingly. Okay, let's pause for a moment. We've learned a lot. We still have a lot more to go, but I want you to do an exercise for me right now. If you have After Effects open, I want you to add a shape layer to your timeline, add a stroke to that shape layer, center the anchor point, and then center the entire thing in your composition using your normal workflow that you normally do. And I want you to time yourself. Then I want you to reset all of your keyboard shortcuts to what we just talked about today and do the same exercise and you'll see how much faster it becomes. Let's do it together. Yeah, that was fast. Like and subscribe. Uh, but you can see how these things start to compound over time over the course of a project when you're creating. And the faster you can get the idea from your brain into the computer, the more confident you're going to feel in your overall workflow and the happier you will be inside of After Effects because you're not spending all this time just like clicking on random menus and like reading through lists of things. None of that exists anymore. If you just set a robust set of keyboard shortcuts, again, all of these will be in the video description below for you to copy my homework.
And the last section of today's video is going to be about animation shortcuts. If you haven't watched my last video about my most used After Effects plugins for 2023, I will put that card on the screen so you can go watch that video. I cover a lot of different time-saving plugins inside of After Effects in that video, but I'm gonna give an honorable mention to my trusty, rusty set here, Flow, which is an amazing animation preset, time-saving, uh, absolute powerhouse of a plugin. And then Keystone, again, another amazing plugin that I don't think I would be able to live without. And this has helped my animation workflow significantly in combination with the effects console from Video Copilot. If I hit control space bar, I can search for anything inside of After Effects and I can just add it right onto that layer and I don't have to open up the effects menu or futz around with any of these you know, tabs over here. I can just search all of After Effects for anything I want and put it directly on the layer. So definitely go watch that video if you haven't seen it already. I'll drop that in the video description as well and up here in the, there's lots of places that you can see this video. But jumping back into our After Effects Shortcuts Masterclass, there are a couple things that I wanna talk about. So let's dive into animation hacks. First and foremost, one of the ones I use all the time is the loop out and loop in function. Let's say I wanted to make this circle pulse. I will set a keyframe, go over 10 keyframes, set a keyframe, go over 10 keyframes, set a keyframe. Look, we're using shortcuts, how fun. And then increase the scale of this keyframe frame right here, highlight these, and then you can see flow in action, apply a nice easing curve to that animation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have this pulsing circle and it's not looping. And let's say I wanna just have it loop for the duration of my timeline, which is like a little over five and a half seconds. What you guys probably do now is highlight these keyframes, copy, go to this one, go over 10 keyframes and then paste, right? But that gets very, very annoying. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is alt click on the stopwatch for scale and then type in loop and then click on where it says loop out. And what that will do is it will automatically loop this animation as soon as it gets to the last keyframe, it will start again from the beginning. So now I have created this pulsing loop animation and I only had to add three keyframes in order to do it. The real sauce comes when I want to use one of our other shortcuts, right? Which is the expand or collapse function, alt, click and drag those keyframes together. Now I can speed up the entire animation and it will account for that in the loop which is really, really incredible. If you wanted to have it stop looping for whatever reason, you can move those keyframes somewhere over towards the middle and you can set this to loop in. And what that will do is it will loop the animation all the way up until it gets to the last keyframe and then stop. So now it will do that pulse. Here we go, pulse, pulse, pulse and stop. Right, And so you can use a combination of both of those things to loop animations or videos or anything that you want inside of After Effects. And you no longer have to worry about copying and pasting and counting out keyframes, which takes such a long time. Loop in, loop out, amazing. Let's jump into how to loop a video indefinitely if you wanna do that. So we'll delete our shape layer and we'll add a video down to our timeline. Now this video is only about four and a half seconds long, but I want it to loop for the entire duration of this 30 second timeline. How do I do that? Well, I'm gonna click on my layer and hit Control, Alt, and T to enable time remapping. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing that we just did on our shape layer. I'm going to Alt, click on the stopwatch and go to loop out. And now I can just extend this layer and it will automatically loop once it gets to the last keyframe back to the beginning. And it will do that for the duration of my timeline. So that is one way that you can loop a video. Another way that you can loop a video is by right clicking on the video in your project, going to interpret footage, main, and then coming down here and changing your loop option. And you can set it to a finite number of times. So let's say I want this to loop three times. Hit okay. I can bring this onto my timeline and it will automatically have the looped three times duration set. But if I need more than that, I can again go to interpret footage main, or I can do that uh, time remapping feature that we just talked about here. The choices are yours. And the last bit of knowledge I wanna give you guys today is proper pre-comping workflows and how to duplicate pre-comps and replace the content in those pre-comps to just have an overall faster and smoother experience. If that confused you at all, this might not be for you, but you also might learn something. So let's jump into it. Let's say I wanna do an animation and I have these still images here of my dog Goji that I generated with AI. And I am going to pre-composite this layer into a new composition, move all attributes to the new composition. And now I have a composition with Goji in it. Let's say I add some keyframes here on a scale property and I scale this up or whatever, and I wanna duplicate this layer twice in my composition, right? So now I have two layers that are scaling up. If I were to open this pre-comp and replace that image with another image, right? Just throw something down on my timeline. It's going to update both of those pre-comps because I duplicated it on my timeline. Now there's a very, very easy way to do this so that you can do work once and then replace content after. Uh, another shortcut that I'm gonna show you right here is if you click on a layer in your project, I have Alt 2 will bring up that layer inside of my project and Alt 1 will bring up the composition that it's in. So if I had these uh, collapsed just so you can 
can see if I want to know what composition or where this composition is, Alt-1 will bring me to that composition. Again, if I click on a layer and I hit Alt-2, it will bring up that layer inside of my project. And now all I have to do is duplicate with Control-D to duplicate that composition. Click on one of the duplicates down here. Now hold Alt, click and drag onto my new timeline and nothing has been updated because it's a clone, but now what I can do is come in here, remove this image, go back to the original image, and now in my composition, I have two duplicates that I have styled and then replaced the media inside of, which is very, very handy. You can also do that exact same thing on your timeline with just layers as well. So if I have this Goji layer right here, and let's say I wanna replace this, let's put some animation on it, right? I'm doing some hypothetically really complex animation on this Goji image. Uh, we have, you know, flow is working, all this looks really good. Uh, but I want to add a new image to this. Instead of copying and pasting these keyframes onto a new layer, what I can do is just select a new image down here, Alt, click, and drag on top of the layer in my composition. It will update that, keep the keyframes, and now I didn't have to do any additional work. All I had to do was swap out the layer content by holding down Alt, clicking, and dragging, and everything still remains the same. Mind blowing, time saving. I understand we have two more quick things to cover real fast before the end of this video. If you wanna collapse all these little tabs on your timeline, let's say you have a pretty big project and this is getting out of hand with the amount of tabs you have up here, you can right click and go to close other panels in group and it will close everything else except for the composition that you're working in, which is definitely a very handy little tool to have. And if you wanted to do a pre-comp here and then you wanted to pre-comp this again for whatever reason and you have a bunch of pre-comps is what I'm trying to illustrate to you here. I've pre-comped this thing three times inside of itself. You can use this little button right here, which is the composition mini workflow chart. And this becomes very handy when you click on this button, you can actually see everything that's inside of those compositions and navigate to the end result very quickly without having to double click, double click, double click, then you're there. That's really annoying, right? I can just close all these panels, boom, come to the composition workflow chart and just go all the way to the end and be like, where is the very end of this line right there? Cool, now I'm inside of it, I can continue working. This button is definitely very, very slept on in After Effects, I use it all the time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the Ian from Learn How to Edit Stuff Shortcut After Effects Masterclass 2023. I'm glad you stuck around to the end of the video. I need some water. We just learned a lot of information. Now, if you're still with me and you did learn at least one or two things today, which I'm pretty much guaranteeing that you have, I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up, dropped a comment in the comment section below, let me know what you learned, and also subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell if you like this kind of content and you want me to do more of it. Again, I will be leaving all of the shortcuts in the video description below so you can copy my homework if you'd like. Thank you once again for joining me on this shortcut journey. I really do appreciate it. My name is Ian, this is Learn How to Edit Stuff, and I will see you in the next one.